Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Being Real. I am Joe. Get used to face, get used to pace because we move quickly. And today we're talking about raw land development, or at least the beginner's book of raw land development. We're going to talk a little bit about subdivision and what that means. And, you know, is it worth it? And uh, I think so. Yeah. But you, you make the decision. I'll give you the information. You decide. And as always, please push the like button and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. That's all I get out of this. And let's jump right into the topic of subdivision of land. So if you go with the oldest question in real, not oldest question, but an old question in real estate is what is better? One five acre parcel or five one acre parcels? Well, better is a really subjective term. So if I'm owning the property and I'm living there, I'm thinking one five acre parcel is better. But if you're talking about value, where's the most value in land? It's in five one acre parcels. Five one acre parcels, the, the sum is greater than the parts, uh, as they say. One fifth, those one acre lots are worth more than one fifth of the value of the five acre parcel. That's why people subdivide. So, why do people subdivide? How do you subdivide? The first thing you want to do is go and find, once you find the property, you want to go and identify what you can do. And that is determined by, and this is going to be different in every state. I am, I'm, I know this, but uh, you go down to the county. Most of these properties are going to be in unincorporated areas. If they're in a city, if they're in the city limits or a township or whatever the, the terminology is, you go to that city or that township, but most of them are going to be at the county level. And even if they're at the city or county, or if you're in Louisiana parish level, you go in and talk to the planner. There's going to be a, a planner there. That's what they do. They plan for the use of land in the area. And you're going to sit down and talk to them. They'll do this for you for free. No, not free because you pay taxes, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So you go down and you talk to them and you tell them what the property is and they'll tell you, what you can do. They'll give you a list of the zoning and the uses for that particular property. And all properties have different zonings and different uses. So what this means, what the local jurisdiction wants to see happen with this property. Now, there'll be multiple things you can do with the property, but there's going, most importantly, you're going to be looking for things that are excluded that you can't do with the property. And what you can do and to what extreme as far as subdivision. In other words, how many parcels can you make out of the existing parcel? And that's going to be designated by the zoning. So, for example, uh, a property that I did recently, um, by recently, I mean, I started over two years ago, was a five acre parcel that we purchased and we wanted to split it into five one acre parcels, just like we talked about in the example. We found out that you could do that. The minimum lot size was one acre. And so though, even though it was allowed, in the end, we weren't able to do that because there's other things that the city, and in this case, the county required us to do, which was a common driveway and so forth, which took away from some of the area. You lose area to common area. And when you lose area to common area, you lose square footage. So we didn't have five full acres left to deal with. We only had four point, whatever it was. So we ended up with four lots, but we had penciled it out ahead of time. And this is the most important thing you need to consider is when you go in and you sit down and you do you, what's called a pre-app, a pre-approval meeting with the local planner, then you sit down and you get all of the information of what you can do. So now you know what you can do and you sit down, you pencil out, okay, what can you do economically? because they're gonna tell you all the things that they're gonna to want to see. So in order to get a permit to do this subdivision of land, you are going to have a list of conditions that they're going to give to you. The local government authority, whichever one it is, is going to give you a list of conditions that you need to meet. And these could be anything. They could be undergrounding the power poles. They could be putting in a new sewer system. They could be a uh, curb gutter and sidewalk all along the front of the property. They, it, literally thousands of things they could be, but they'll tell you, Okay, these are the things we're going to ask you to do. And they're not going to ask you to do thousands of things, but they have their choice and they're going to ask you to do them. And this is where it's good to know what you're doing and to have a good land agent with you because there's some things that they can make you do and there's some things that they just want you to do. So it comes down to negotiation of what you want to do and what you don't want to do. So you obviously want to do as little as possible because it's all cost. It's, it's cost prohibitive at some point. Now, it's the job of the city planner or the county planner to get you to do as much as possible because what you don't do, the local government has to do. 
Okay, so if you, they're not going to make you do curb better and sidewalk, someone's going to have to do curb better and side, sidewalk. So it's a negotiation, and it's uh, it can be done. It's it's not a big deal. It goes back and forth every time. So you have to sit down and find out what are the things that they're going to request of you, and then determine if it's feasible, if it's economically feasible. If they want a, B, C, D, and E done, you sit down and figure out how much A, B, C, D, and E are going to cost. And then you take the cost of the land plus the cost of the improvements and you add that up, obviously, and then you find out what, are the, what is the value of the additional lots. So if you're going to make, in our example, we wanted to make five, but we were only to make four. And Okay, so was four going to be enough? Well, we found out it was going to cost us $40,000 to do the improvements. The property cost us $100,000, and we estimated that the lots would sell for $60,000 a piece. So that fifth lot would have been really nice, as you can see, but it wasn't available. So we worked out all the math and said, well, $140,000 in cost, that's for the land and for the improvements, versus what we projected to be $240,000 in sales. Yeah, it's worth doing. It's $100,000 on $240,000 investment. The problem with these subdivisions, folks, and it's a subdivision whether you're just subdividing the property in half or if you're doing 200 parcels. Everything is subdividing real property, so it is a subdivision, whether it's just a lot split or if it's a huge actual subdivision. Now, what you need to do is be aware that these things take time. It doesn't matter where you're at, what jurisdiction you're in, they take time. This particular project took us almost two years to do, two years. So granted, things move slower in California. I'll give you that. But no matter which jurisdiction you're in, you're going to find that the usually government moves fairly slow. They're not motivated to make a profit. So you've got to motivate them while doing it kindly with a smile on your face because they can really make your life miserable. But you do this all ahead of time and figure out, is it really worth it? Is it really worth it? So you can see by the examples that I've given you, the more lots you can produce and the more lots you can subdivide and create out of one parcel, the better off you're going to be. This isn't always 100% true, but it is mostly true. I'll say it's over 90% true. So you're really looking for the land that can be developed and split into as many pieces as possible because you're going to be taking a long, long time to do this. And I will also let you know that what you really wanna do is get a lease on the property and let the owners know up front what you're doing. And usually they'll be agreeable to this because they want to find out if it's subdividable too and what can be done and what the costs are. They just have never done it. They've never done it. There's millions and millions and millions of acres of land out there that have never, no one's even gone in to talk about because the owners just never got around to it and they don't want it. It's a hassle. All you got to do is go down, sit down, talk to them, ask the people straight up, what do you need? Figure it out. Somebody pencil it out and find out if it's worth doing. So yeah, there's a lot of deals out there that are worth doing. And this is a very basic elementary beginning outlook, but it's just give you an idea. This is how land development works. You sit down, you figure out what you can do. You figure out what the value of the properties are going to be once you've subdivided the land and you add in the cost of the property and the cost of the improvements. It's that simple. And then you set out to do it. Now going out and doing it is a whole different thing, but... You at least now know the very, very basics. Please leave a comment in this comment section below. Ask me any questions. I do free consultations if you need them. If you want to know more about this, or have any additional questions, which I'm sure you do if you actually want to do subdivision of land, let me know in the comments. I will get in touch with you directly. Okay, thanks so much. Don't forget to hit that like button and please do subscribe.